A reoccurring question that I'm being asked with increased frequency by various other people talking about RPGs and similar subjects is how can I be as good as you are, Mr. Welch? Well, you can't. But I can share my experience and help people review books and games with a little bit more clarity. This is one of the many services I provide. The more people we have talking about RPGs, the better. Why there aren't other channels talking about the various settings like I do with Mastara is something I consider of more than a bit disheartening. There are hundreds of RPGs waiting to be talked about. That's going to take me some time, so other people have to step up. But enough chatter. Here's 10 things to remember when doing a review. For the people watching this channel for the first time and wondering what is the backstory of this mysterious stranger with a penchant for witticisms and a warm furry voice that makes my insights feel a little funny. A bit of exposition. I have worked in the gaming industry on and off for several decades, but never got in all the way because as much as I love RPGs and game design, Forensic Blood Spatter Pathology and later OTR Supply Chain Logistics put more food on the table and more books on my shelf. But I have worked for numerous publications, most notably the culture-themed magazine Red Pub that covered all manners of various plays, concerts, and art shows inside the 610 Loop. Back when we had various plays, concerts, and art shows inside the 610 Loop. For over a decade, I reviewed countless plays, performances, and all the Shakespearean events you could possibly want. And Hamlet. Much of the same techniques I used covering Sondheim and Coward actually translated into looking at books by Pondsmith and Reindot Hagen. Plus, in playing all the games that eventually ended up on the Mr. Welch list, it gave me an insight into a huge variety of mechanics and systems. The first thing you need to do when you are setting up your review of a game is to establish a baseline parameter for what you think makes the game good. Some things can reduce the quality of a game. Some things like lack of an index, a dice system that's too restrictive for continued play, or instructions that are poorly explained. Appearance is nice, but older games didn't have the same printing technology we enjoy now, so their layout is going to look crude by comparison. If there's a mechanic or system you don't like, identify it quickly and let the readers know why you don't like the system. You're trying to let people see the game from your point of view. You don't want to leave them guessing on your reasoning. Second, don't make it personal. You are reviewing the game, not the person that wrote it. Who the author is shouldn't matter in your opinion. You need to keep an open mind when you crack open the book. If you don't like the author from the start, unless you're reviewing the game out of morbid curiosity, your bias is going to shine through, and that's going to open the slant the review. Your reputation as a reviewer has to be one of impartiality, or else it's worthless. Some game designers have sordid pasts, but unless the pages are dripping with their fetishes, it's not relevant to you. Keep the review to what is written, and ignore who wrote it. On a related note, don't take it personally. Some people have tissue-thin skin. If you point out flaws in their system, game world, or game design, they're going to get a little snippy on you. Good designers will thank you for finding a game-breaking bug, plot hole, or piece of missing backstory. They want their game to be the best it can be. That's why they have playtesters. Anybody that finds a problem is helping them in their goal to hammer out all the bugs. But others think their first draft is flawless and only worthy of praise. They will take umbrage against anyone who dares besmirch their holy script. Doesn't matter if you point out that their basic math is off, their game world is a direct ripoff of another work, or their rules are so obtuse to be useless. You have become their enemy, and they will rail against you and spew vitriol. The worst ones will even spam your review with increasingly nonsensical tirades about why you are wrong and you're a terrible person. Don't delete their posts, because all they will do in these cases is turn people against them. Especially when their version of your review doesn't actually mesh with the actual review. All you do is just give them enough rope, they'll do the rest. The next pointer is something that a lot of people never grasp. Avoid modern day politics. It doesn't matter if you're a Republican, Democrat, Green, Libertarian, Tory, Labor, Whig, Blythe, Kimaru, Federalist, Antifederalist, or official monster raving loony party. Don't do it. For one simple reason. Modern politics age like milk. Politicians leave office. Current events stop being current, and hot-button issues stop being issues after a few years. Politics will date a piece badly, because it's usually a snapshot of a specific time period. If you're reviewing a politically charged game, most of those are appealing to one base or another. The people on the other side of the spectrum are never going to pick it up, so you're reviewing it for the people that do believe in it. And still, keep the politics out of it. Review it on its merits, not if the particular world is a utopia or dystopia for a specific political mindset. When you do your review, look for similarities in other products. This is not saying they rip somebody off at all. That's just a matter of fact. There's only so many ways you can tell a story. There's only so many ways that you can create a mathematical calculation to determine success or failure. There's always going to be some overlap somewhere. Finding a unique mechanic for a system is incredibly difficult. Finding one that works is even tougher. Gimmicky mechanics are prone to failure, so most designers will borrow elements from proven systems. It's easier to compare new games to the older, more recognized games they appear similar to as well. 
If they borrowed a mechanic that already has flaws in its designs, then you can point out that the flaws from the original game are still present in the new one. If nothing else, you're giving people a frame of reference they will already recognize when you talk about a system they aren't readily familiar with. One of the harder parts of reviewing RPGs is checking the math, but it's also a crucial part of the review as well. The mathematical formula behind the game is one of the two things that's going to determine if it's fun or not, with the other half obviously being story. If there is a flaw in the formula, that's going to bode ill for the finished project. You don't have to figure out the exact odds of each die roll, but you do need to understand the basic mechanics to explain them. If you find the game doesn't have enough of a percentile range to keep the game balanced or from easily getting bored, you need to figure out that ahead of time. If it's too hard or too easy, that'll come out quickly in a playtest, and then you can make suggestions on how to fix the error. Always try to make suggestions on how to make the game better. Don't just criticize for the sake of criticism. That's a flaw that a lot of people have, is they will concentrate on the negative, and people don't like it when all you do is whine. Find something, anything, positive to say about the product you're reviewing. Next, don't sweat small mistakes. Everybody makes typos. That's not a major concern in the grand scheme of things. Now, if those typos are glaringly obvious, like being on the cover or in a title inside the book, that's going to get noticed and should be pointed out. Nothing says inadequate proofing like a typo on the book cover. This is especially true when games are translated from another language, because they still need to get a proofreader of the language that the book is going to be in. There's a lot of reasons for glitches. It's the nature of the business. If you get a lot of typos, then bring it up. But if you find a single flipped H in the word THE, just keep reading. If you find 12, mention it. But don't get obsessed with the minutia. Once you've read through all the crunchy parts, be sure to bring up the better parts of the fluffy part. In addition to going through the basic outline of the game, be sure to find some interesting bits of fluff or background dimension. Anything from interesting side characters and customs and rituals that make the setting interesting and unique. Show that you've read the fine print and just didn't skim the elevator pitch. If you find problems with the setting, this is how you show that you've looked deep into the lore and you've noticed the issues with the premise, continuity, or the game world in general. Digging deep also lets you find the author's self-inserts, fetishes, or poorly disguised messages. Read beyond the synopsis and get to the background. You don't want to read the entire book. It's a new publication. You should be on a time crunch. But skim the world building for the flaws or the impressive parts that become obvious to you as you read. When you're giving your review, it helps to give references to things that people understand to help them grasp the concept that is your subject. A new game is going to have a lot of different concepts that will be hard to grasp on the first read-through. It might be inspired by a large number of different sources that players would be far more familiar with than the actual game. For ease of reference, mention all these inspirations. If a character is an allegory for someone, mention it. Don't overdose them on references, but use examples as needed to increase the understanding of the game. If you can make the references humorous, so much the better. You want to make your review enjoyable to read or watch, rather than sounding like a lecture you'd get at a film festival. Lastly, unless you're doing an all-encompassing review of the history of the game, don't worry about previous editions too much. If you want to talk about changes from prior editions to the current, that's one thing. That helps older players understand the new edition. But don't linger on it too much, as you've only got so much space to talk or write about the review. You want to keep the focus on the product at hand. Ideally, the previous editions only need to be brought up if there's substantial changes in either the mechanics or the setting. If either are radically different, then treat the new edition as an entirely unique game. Don't linger on explanations that otherwise could be used to talk about the current version. That's 10 tips for reviewing games from my own personal experience. Take what works for you. Ignore the rest. Above all else, don't be afraid to give your opinion. And do not be afraid to take flack for your opinion. Some people don't like to be criticized. But if they don't learn from their mistakes, they will never improve. Don't be afraid to criticize when something needs to be criticized. But don't shy away from praise when you find something that's really good either. You are there to steer people towards the good stuff and keep them away from the bad. You're doing the Lord's work. Never apologize.